الله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده, عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا صديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We begin by praising Allah, Lord of Majesty and Honor Most High. Ya Allah, all praise in the heavens and the earth is due to you until you are pleased with such praise. Ya Allah, all praise in the heavens and the earth and from the sincerest sections of our heart is due to you when you are pleased. Ya Allah, lak alhamd abadan abada. Ya Rabb, O oh our Lord, praise is due to you always and forever. And we further testify. And we send prayers, prayers, blessings and peace upon the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions and whomsoever traverses the path and follows his sunnah until the last day and Ya Rabb make us from amongst them. And we further testify or we recognize that the best of speech, the wisest, purest and clearest of speech is the speech of our Lord recorded in the book of Allah. And the best of guidance to Allah's pleasure and in all matters of our lives is the, is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the worst of matters in our religion and our deen are innovations, those things, those heresies that are placed in the religion but are not from the religion and we seek refuge from being carriers of innovation from being propagators of innovation or being from afflicted from innovation and where innovation and its practitioners end Ya Rab, after seeking refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan in the name of Allah, Master of Mercy in this life and the next Allah Most High He states O oh mankind, ya ayyuhan nas. Notice he doesn't say, ya, ya ayyuhal ladina amnu. He doesn't just address the believers because this is a universal biological fact, right? O oh mankind, have taqwa of Allah, have a guarding awareness of your Lord. Protect yourself from the anger of your Creator, the one who created you from a single soul. There was a time when there was just one person, Adam, the zygote, Adam, male and female, in general, right? And then from that, his spouse came. From the man that, well, it's not, you can't even say the man. From the original, it was split into man and woman, it's better, right? And from those two, many men and women were spread on the earth. And have taqwa of Allah's, have taqwa of Allah, right? By whose name and whose right you ask for your mutual rights amongst yourself. Notice and think about it. To a believer, or even to someone who may not even be a Muslim but believes in God. You can say, I, in English we have an expression, an old expression, some people maybe study it here, right? I adjure you by God, I ask you by God. I ask you by Allah, right? If, if someone's... If you're in that situation, you ask someone by Allah, give me my rights or don't do this, fear Allah, right? These are the expressions that human beings use around the world. Indeed, Allah is ever watching of you. Why do we say that? Because Allah is watching us. Or you who believe, have taqwa of Allah. Not just have taqwa of Allah. Haqqa tuqati, as he deserves to have taqwa. Meaning not by your estimation, but by his estimation. Not by your estimation, but by his estimation, right? Uh, Al-Imam Abdul Qadir Jalani said something amazing. His first khutbah in um, uh, in Futuhat al-Ghayb, right? In Futuhat al-Ghayb, is a Muslim needs three things. And this is taqwa. And in summary, this is taqwa, right? To be in a good state with his Lord at all times. It's a universal state. You know when we go outside of the, the house, uh, brothers and sisters, right? What do we do? I always do the check, the three things, right? Your phone, your key, your wallet, right? You, we, you always do that when you go out. Which pockets are in, all that kind of stuff. Well, we have a system. Those of us who are a bit more organized, right? We, the Muslim, the believer needs to have three, he needs to check three things. Is he doing three things? Is he abiding by the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And think about it, it's this month. What are we doing? We're doing things that we don't normally do. Why? Because we're abiding by Allah's commandments. And we're going beyond that. Well, I'm going to talk about, address this in the khutbah. The second thing, to stay away from the prohibitions. 
that Allah has placed in His book and in His sunnah. To, not, to do what Allah tells you to, simple as. To do with what Allah tells you to do and to not do what Allah tells you not to do. Right? And then the final one, and this is the one we forget. And to be pleased with what Allah has decreed. Because if you do these things, right, it may be that Allah will write for you difficulty as a, as, as a reward or as a test for you. But then you have to be pleased with that. It may be if you don't do these things, or if you see someone not doing these things, Allah may bless them with wealth and other things, right? And your test may be patient for knowing that maybe that person gets good in dunya, you get good in akhirah, or that thing that's good, what you think is good for them is not good for them. We don't know. Not, I, I remember turning on the TV one day, and a few weeks before, I'd had a problem with my car and it set a, a delay in my whole day. Really annoying, right? You find this doesn't start, all that kind of stuff. You wait for the, the man to come and he shows or he places a part, something simple, all that. The, the shaykh on the TV said something amazing. He said, the next time your car doesn't start, thank Allah. Well, okay. It's like he's talking to me, but well, why would I, you know. Okay, I don't feel thankful. I should thank Allah for all the things, having a car. Right, why, why? He said, do you not know? How many do? If you're not going to die of a heart attack or of cancer in this country, what are you going to die of? You're going to die of a car crash, right? How do you know that Allah has not written to protect you because of a dua or a good thing you made from something that may have happened on the road that day? Something I, mean, I never thought of that before. I don't know, I always remember. There's a brother that had a similar situation. He said, oh man, I've got to put all this money into my car. I said, look, you don't know. That, could, that journey could have been something else. I said, oh no, bro, you're so right. For a believer, always being happy with the decree, decree of Allah because the Lord that's decreeing things for you is not a vengeful nor a spiteful Lord. But this please come forward. It's going to be most likely the busiest Jummah of the year already. Right? There's not normally this many people here. Please, wherever you've got gaps, fill it in. Right? Inshallah, you can enjoy your um, personal space in the, uh, uh, in, in the future. My sister's very good at this. And they've got cramped space. They need the space as well. Um, so that's the second point I wanted to mention. The third ayah. Ya ayyuhalladhina amnu. Oh, you believe. Have taqwa of Allah and speak a true word. First things first, Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhu, he mentioned the voice. There's, there's no word truer than La ilaha illallah. The kalimah tayyibah, right, is the truest and the purest word. When you speak a true word, there's no truer word spoken by a creation of Allah than La ilaha illallah. No doubt, right? But then living that in your life and speaking true and good words and thinking about that in fasting as well. That's from the levels of fasting. From the basic level of taqwa fasting is to keep away from that which is normally permissible, right, from food and drink and other things, right, during the day, relations during the day, but from a person who's truly fasting, I try to make this to myself, look, people may think and have a misconception, right, either there's people who have a vengeful sort of vendetta against people of being generally more, they're all, they're all wrong, right, or there may be people who think that Imam Zain, I'm not, right, you understand, and neither are any of all the other brothers I know, right, uh, or the Shuyuk from the Mawlan. But what I try to do is I try to watch my speech when I'm fasting. If I was to use even a turn of phrase, not necessarily a really foul word, but even a turn of phrase which would be uncouth or a little bit, I'd stop when I'm speaking and say, maybe I can put it in a more polite way because I'm fasting. Right? Alhamdulillah, I've not had the problem. No road rage, nothing else where I have to say to the person, someone wants to fight me, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. But you have to fight yourself. That's where my fight is in this Ramadan. Just need to watch myself and be aware that the state of fasting is not the state of not fasting. It shouldn't feel the same. You shouldn't just be speaking in your same way if you're, you're, if you're, you know, um, if you're, if you're uh, a little lapsed with your language. If you're all human, which we all are, right? Maybe we should watch that thing. It could be a big thing with Allah. Hmm. Uh, and then Allah mentions, <clears throat> Allah, if you do this, if you have taqwa of Allah and you speak the true word, Allah will forgive for you your sins and rectify for you your state of affairs. Believer, what could a believer want more than this? He will forgive for you your sins and rectify for you your state of affairs. And whomsoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, he's already achieved the greatest success. Now these three ayat constitute the, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and what he would mention in khutbah al-hajjah. So whenever I'm doing a khutbah or I'm conducting a marriage or whatever, I mention these ayat. All three of them have the same amr. All three of them have the same command. Right? It's Allah. Have fear of Allah. Have taqwa of Allah. Now if we look and analyze this word, we can look at this. When the scholars break down a word, they break down on... There's a reason why. Think, why is he going on about the khutbah al-hajjah? You'll see. I'm going somewhere with this. Right? Be patient. Right? When we break down a word, the first thing we look is the istilah al uh, What does it mean in the language? Taqwa comes from waqaya, from waqa, from the root word, if you break it down, right? Waqa means to protect oneself. In the language, al waqaya, to protect yourself from uh, Allah's anger, right? That's the ma'ana shari. So a person of taqwa, a muttaqi, would look at an action or go down a road and think, is this going to be displeasing to Allah? Am I going to fall into a situation where I'm going to harm the creation or hurt the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me not go that path. That's a muttaqi. In a discussion between Halifa uh, uh, ibn al-Yaman and Umar ibn al-Khattab, there's an amazing description that Halifa gives. And he was known as the Amin of the Prophet the one who'd keep his secrets. 
Right? So when the names of the Munafiqeen or the hypocrites were revealed in Al Madina, the Prophet ﷺ told them to only Hudayfa. Umar used to watch, it's a famous thing. They said, we would see if Hudayfa would offer Salah if there was a janazah after the death of the Prophet. ﷺ. He would see if, if Hudayfa walked, he'd know that person was a Munafiq. He would pray over it, right? So he asked him, he said, What's taqwa Hudayfa? He was a man of wisdom, right? And he said, Ya Amir al he gave him an example. Imagine, yeah? So what am I, right? That you're walking down a path and you see some other, some harm. There's Arabs in the, in the room, they'll tell you there's some harm, some thorns, some problems. He said, What would you do? He said, I would lift my thobe. He said, Tilka, tilka taqwa. That's taqwa. Now, the example, the thobe, like we have here, mashallah, right? We've got a clean cloth. The path is life and the adha is sin. So if you lift your hisab from keeping away from sin, you're a muttaqi, according to the definition of the Sahaba. Now, in the Quran, Ramadan is the month of the Quran. And this is the last khutbah of Ramadan. And I've been blessed enough to have an opportunity to speak to your brothers and sisters about or in this situation. In Ramadan, right? What does Allah mention is the primary maqsad or the primary purpose for worship. Now, the few key worships that we have, there's only a couple where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the primary idol or sabab or whatever, the cause for it. In salah, Allah mentions to Musa, waqimah salat al dhikri establish the prayer, you can remember me by it. You're forced to remember your creator five times a day. You should remember, we should all remember more. May Allah give us tawfiq. But you have to remember five times a day. Allah mentions, Ya ayyuhu alladhina amnu. Oh, you who believe. Right? And it's definitely uh, apropos that we're in um, a building structured by the people of the book as well. On this, on this point, fasting was written for you like it's written for before you. Right? Speak to a Christian. Speak to a Jew. Speak to, in fact, every religious tradition on the planet has fasting as one of its rituals. The Hindus have it. Right? But the people of the book as well have it, definitely. The Jews have Passover and other times of the day that they fast, like us. The Christians also have Lent, and we have Ramadan. And it's all for the same reason. <laughs> in order that you may gain taqwa. Now what does Allah mention in those three eyes? You see the point I was making now? Have taqwa, have taqwa, have taqwa. Is it because Allah needs taqwa? Or is it because we need taqwa to protect ourselves from what we've signed up for? Now, if I think about it this way, right? For the students in the room, they'll understand this. When you sign up for a degree, you signed up for a test or an examination, for a reward or a failure at the end. It's a microcosm of life. When we're taking on a job, when you, say, when you shake your boss's hand or you sign a contract, you're taking on a set of conditions for a reward. For those people who are based perhaps in the finance in, in, industry, they expect a big bonus at the end if they do well. What do they expect if things don't, don't go well? There will be repercussions. Life is like this. We teach our children this. Having an active mindset, having an active mindset of working towards the goal to take away from distractions, learning the art of saying no and doing the right thing and keeping your own <coughs> dignity, keeping your own principles while trying to succeed in life is what the art of life is all about. It's what makes a woman a woman or a man a man. It's what separates child from, from adult. When it comes to navigating the difficulties of life, sticking to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? By doing what He orders you for your own good and forbidding yourself or stopping yourself from that which may be tempting, but you know in your heart is wrong and the book will tell you is wrong for your own good and being pleased with whatever comes out that's not in your hands is from your own good. Why? At the end of the day, if you have that and things don't work out for you in the way that you wanted, you can be thankful. Nowadays, all the, the modern uh, self-development experts and all of these people, they're all talking about attitude of gratitude. You know what people need? The reason why we in the West are depressed as a people, why we are struggling, why there's a suicide epidemic, why no one's happy even though they've got everything in the dunya, is we're not thankful for what we have. We don't have a gratitude mindset. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid it down, not only in the Quran, but this is from the previous revelations. And remember when Allah decreed, it's probably in the Old Testament, Surah Ibrahim, Allah mentions, if you're thankful, I will increase you. Not only you'll be happy with what you have, I will increase you. And if you're ungrateful, remember my punishment is severe. SubhanAllah. Right? This is the situation. SubhanAllah, this is the situation. Now we have 11 months in the year. Ibn Rajab, who has written a fantastic book which has been translated on the Islamic months, right? Mentions a beautiful parable. He said the parable of the 12 months of the year, or Ramadan to the other 11 months of the year, is the parable of Yusuf to his 11 brothers. Just like Yusuf used to shine like the moon of the stars, the stars, Ramadan shines above the other months, right? It has that virtue. Think about this. That which is permissible for us for the rest of the year becomes prohibited for, the rest of, for this year. But why? Because Allah knows it's what we need. Ultimately, you and I have created a witness against ourselves. Ya Abdullah. 
Ya Amatullah, right? We have created a witness against ourselves that if we can stay away from what Allah has permitted for a year, should it not be possible for us to stay away from what Allah has prohibited for the rest, for a month? We can do it for a month. We can give up our own food and drink, that which we need to survive. How many times have we had that thing, yeah? <laughs> we had that situation. Not even water, yes, Karen, not even water, right? We've had, all had that situation, right? We can all do it, right? So we should take that spirit of hope. And ultimately, this religion, Mullah, is a religion of hope. It's a religion of hope, and it's a religion of thankfulness and goodness and positivity. So if we can take that message in for the rest of the year, and if that's the point that I've made that I've got across. No, I didn't prepare. These, these are notes that I have to... Um, these are the, the announcements that no one uh, wants to hear. No, yes, there will be a fundraiser. Don't worry, it won't be 20 minutes or 30 minutes like most, uh, most 27th or 29th, uh, right? But on this point, seriously, it's, if that's the point I've, I, I've, I've put across, be thankful to Allah, keep a spirit of hope and take something good with you, I think I've made the point of my khutbah. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Bismillah, the Masalatu was salam, ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa mamula. The second part of this khutbah is not for the one who fulfilled all of his fasts, his health was good, his family situation was good, his wealth was good, and he turned up to Taraweeh and he maxed it out. He did his 20 every night and he did everything. He gave charity, maybe thousands, because he was blessed with. He built a mosque here, he fell, fed that one. It's not for that one. It's for the one who fell slot short. Maybe he violated one of his fasts. Maybe he didn't pray. Maybe he didn't get up, right? Maybe he missed Tarawih because he was lazy and he ate too much, right? It's for that one. No slave of Allah that Ramadan is such a situation that in the language, the, the word Ramadan is fascinating. It normally came in the hottest part of the, of the year for the desert Arabs. And it came from the word, it's a bird, Ramda, Ramadan. Now Ramda means to throw meat uh, on the hot desert sands, and in certain places, still happens in Arabia, in some of the hottest deserts in the world, it will happen. You can throw meat, or you can, you can put a frying pan on the sands, because it gets up to 50, 50 plus, right? And the meat will cook, right? And the spiritual understanding of this is Ramadan is such a time that if you throw your sins on the desert of life, or in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll burn off or you'll be burnt. It's one of the two, right? Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned something for the one who had something deficient in his fast. He said, in every night of Ramadan, Allah sets free a portion of his slaves. Even tonight, if things didn't go the way you wanted them to. And for, well, like for me, my Ramadan wasn't as great as I wanted it to be. It's not been my best Ramadan ever. I always try to set myself, Ya Allah, make every Ramadan better than the next. It's generally, it goes in the right trajectory, but it's, that's not what's happened, right? It's just life, right? You know, they have this image where they say, success in your head is from A to Z. You just come into the first day, you walk into university. You know, you listen to a lecture and you think you're an expert, right? And then you come out on the third day, you'll have your first and walk off and someone will hire you and then life, you know, like, you know, the doors of the, 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 doors of the dunya will open and then the doors of the will open. What you'll realise, things will go back by the second year, you'll be telling everyone you don't want to do it. By the third year, you'll be praying for relief and then finally you'll be out and hopefully have something with you. That's how life works. It goes back, forward, back, forward and then eventually you get to something that you didn't expect but that you deserved, right? That's life. Just like that, Ramadan is like that. Life is like that. It could be this night. So if you turn up and you say something, right? Even if you're not praying, even like, look, generally, look, if you're one of these people who fast, look, we have this thing, everyone talks about Ramadan Muslims. Of course we're going to have Ramadan Muslims, that's the point, right? If the devils are locked up, anyone who's inclined to deen is going to be better in Ramadan than they are without Ramadan. So don't criticize, encourage. That's what I'm saying, right? And also, don't lose hope. Think about your sins and say, okay, Allah, I've sinned, but you're the most one, you're the one. What, what did the Prophet Sassam teach Aisha to say? She came to him and said, oh, Messenger of Allah, on the... On, Laylatul Qadr, the night decree, what should I say? He said, most beloved thing that Allah would like to hear, La ilaha illallah, wa ahdu wa la sharika la, ahun mulku wa la hamd, wa hu ala kulli shayin qadir. The longer one in Tirmidhi, they mentioned the second one. She said, that's for my Lord, well, I need something for myself. He said, okay. Meaning he's teaching, and the best thing to do is just remember, forget yourself, remember Allah, right? He, then he said, say Allah. Allahumma, inna ta'afuun, tuhibbu al-afa fa'afuanna. Now, he didn't say gufur. What's the fa'af? Ma fa'af bainu al-afa wa ma'afira. What's the difference between forgiveness and this word, عفو. to forgive means someone did something wrong, brother, I'll forgive you. You know, you don't forget, but you forgive. Yeah, Afwa is not that. Imagine someone has a £10,000 debt and says, listen, man, I can't pay it. Someone comes to you and says, you can't pay it. Right? He says, I can't pay it. Right? What do you say? It's the equivalent of someone ripping up the piece of paper and said, there's no debt. That's what Afwa. You're asking for a complete manumission to wipe out the sins. Every night. 
And tonight's from the odd nights of Ramadan, right? According to the start. The point is, it's from the last 10. It is never give up and never lose hope. There was a man who killed 99 people, went to a worship of Allah. We know the hadith, right? And when he told him that you can't be forgiven, he killed him and made 100. It didn't solve his problem. He went to a man of knowledge and he said, of course, Allah can forgive anything, but get out of this town. And when Allah was, uh, when he was going towards this town that the, 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 the scholar mentioned, Allah took his soul. And in the end, Allah forgave him because he set out on a path of forgiveness. He set out to do an action. Just take a step. Allah, take, do this. A practical example. Just take a step and see how Allah will change your life. We've had example over example over example of people that change their lives in a moment. Right? From the history of our virtuous son. Brothers, please move forward. There are gaps and there's a lot of people and there's going to be people coming in. It's going to be the busiest uh, uh, Jummah of the year. So we need all the space we can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expand for you. Right? So that's the first thing. So now, let us remind ourselves of three things and take one thing with us. The Prophet Nassadna mentioned, so this is something to give you some positivity. I mentioned two hadith. The famous one, we know, I like this one, so we'll mention it, right? Man sama Ramadan, iman and wahtisaban. Whoever fasts in Ramadan with iman and expecting Allah to reward him, what's his reward? His previous sins are forgiven. Whoever qama Ramadan, whoever stands in Ramadan, salatu tarawih, these come things. Whoever stands and prays in Ramadan, iman and wahtisaban, believing in Allah, expecting his reward, Allah will forgive his previous sins. Man qama Laylatul Qadr, whoever stands in Laylatul Qadr, meaning to pray, right? With iman and an expectation of reward, Allah will forgive his previous sins. We know all of these things. But you're going to have taken one these things. Okay, Laylatul Qadr doesn't come back. Fasting, yes. Some brothers do, and sisters do, do increasing their fast. We know the ruling. If you were sick or you were unable to fast, you make it up. And if you've got a long-term medical condition, you're permitted to uh, give some charity to, as a covering. But if you fast, it's better for you. We know that. But what's the other thing that we do? Every single Muslim, right? We open up our dos, dusty mushaf or a copy of the Quran. We try to do a uh, khatam or read something. Take that with you. Okay, you may not be able to read every day. That may not be you. But what you can do is once a week, you'll say, you know what, I'm going to give myself half an hour, 15 minutes a week, and I'm going to read the Quran. And I'm going to try to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to me. If you read the Quran regularly and you memorize the portion, it may be time for you to think, you know what, I should learn something from the Arabic language. Right? If you're someone who's read the Quran or an adult, and this is like, it's kind of like the, the, uh, the embarrassment pandemic. There's a lot of us as adults, right? that haven't learned to read the Qur'an properly. Some of it's for perfectly legitimate reasons. Some of us came into the deen late, whatever. But we're embarrassed to ask for help to learn the, learn the Qur'an. Would you be embarrassed to ask for help in a professional setting if you didn't know something and it was competent to ask? No, you wouldn't. But why would you be up with your deen? Okay, for those people who are teaching, maybe we should be sensitive. They don't want to sit with the 10-year-olds or the 8-year-olds. I get that, right? But then make yourself some time. Go and learn. Be humble. Humble yourself. And Allah's book will open up to you secrets that you can only imagine. So let us connect with the Qur'an. Let us take the wisdoms and the, and the blessings of the Qur'an. Indeed, because what you will find yourself is not just a distorted al hayat, right? It's not just a constitution for life, but a guidebook and a companion for life. I say, by Allah, the one who takes the Qur'an as a companion, he will never be lonely, even if he's in the loneliest of places. Why? Because he has Allah speaking to him by his side, right? That's what we have. We have this month that this book was revealed, right? And we should give thanks by reciting, understanding, and following the book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to be from the people who hear the call and follow that which is best from it. Oh Allah, accept every single one's fasting, no matter how broken it may be. Oh Allah, accept everyone's, uh, every single one who prayed and stood for you in the night, no matter how distant they may have been in their thoughts from you. Oh Allah, accept everyone who strived to find the night of decree or Laylatul Qadr, no matter how little that they did. Oh Allah, any of us who gave charity, accept our charity, even if it's pennies. O oh Allah, those of us who are poor, enrich them from your mercy and from your bounties. Those of us who are rich, increase them in their richness and let them, spe let them get from halal and spend in halal. O oh Allah, those ones who are unmarried, let them be married to a righteous a spouse. O oh Allah, those who are married, protect and keep their marriage, their wealth, their houses and their children and make them places of taqwa and iman. O oh Allah, those of us or any Muslim who is suffering in his heart or in his body, cure his heart or cure his body. O oh Allah, wherever the Muslims are suffering, whether it may be in Gaza, whether it may be in Burma, whether it may be in the Yemen, whether it may be in the lands of the east and the west that we don't know of. Anyone who is saying, La ilaha illallah to you, Ya Rabbi, be for them a help and an aid. Oh Allah, unify the ummah and bless us with a righteous and a pious leadership. Oh Allah, return us to the state that we are fitting of when we are befitting of it by obeying your book and following the sunnah of your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, preserve for us our children's iman in this land which is far from iman. Oh Allah, make us people 
who believe in you, worship you, and are deserving to say La ilaha illallah with their last breath, so that they can be entered into paradise bila hisabin wala adab, without, without any account or without any punishment. Oh Allah, don't make the difficulties of life overburdening for us. Oh Allah, bless us in our families. Bless those brothers who are returned, sisters who are returning back to their families for Eid. For those people who are sending money back to their people in Eid. Oh Allah, bless us all with a good Eid and an acceptance of all the good we've done and a forgiveness of any evil we've done. Oh Allah, give us a time that becomes a turning point in our life for us to be righteous human beings, righteous Muslims, good Muslims and examples for the people so we can spread La ilaha illallah in this land which hasn't had much La ilaha illallah. Bless us with the tawfiq to carry La ilaha illallah to the lands of the East and the West and bless us to have a progeny from us who carries on worshipping you until we meet you. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin wa ala ahli wa sahbihi wa sallam wa aqeem as-salah. Allah.